So I've been complaining about the Final Fantasy series and the direction that they're going these days, but I haven't really examined Final Fantasy VI or how they made the game work the way it did. Who directed, and how did they get all these different characters to kind of blend together and all be likable? Well, actually it turns out that there were three directors, Hironobu Sakaguchi, Yoshinori Kitase, and Hiroyuki Ito. I butchered all their names, I'm sure, but actually they weren't the only ones in charge of writing. That was all divided up among five individuals who wrote their own characters and designed their own backstories for those characters. Sakaguchi wrote for Terror and Law, Kitase wrote for Celes and Gao, Tetsuya Nomura wrote for Shadow and Setzer, Kaiori Tanaka wrote for Edgar and Sabin. Then after all that was done, Kitase figured out how all these characters with their separate motivations would be able to come together to form a group. How would they be motivated by the story's main plotline, and how are they going to react to it? Well, it turns out that is exactly how traditional pen and paper role-playing games are put together. However, this charming take on character development isn't something really shared by modern Final Fantasy games. In fact, in Final Fantasy XIII, they did everything in reverse. Toriyama wrote the story based on the setting before any characters were developed. He then handed the script off to someone else and told them to write the characters into the story such that they would fit. For example, one of the characters had to try to commit suicide, and they decided that the comic relief should do it. Why? I don't know, because the other characters were wrapped up in other crap, I guess, and Saz wasn't doing anything. The script called for it, someone had to do it. See, if you know your traditional gaming, they call this railroading, and it's severely frowned upon. Deciding how a game is going to play out ahead of time, independently of what your players want to do or what the characters are going to want to do, it's really not very fun. It makes it difficult to develop an emotional connection or to feel like you have any freedom. The player starts to ask themselves, you know, I have a motorcycle plane, why don't I go somewhere safe? And then the game goes, no, no, you have to go to the next point, it's the only place that you can go, and when you get there, your motorcycle plane crashes or runs out of gas or explodes or something, so you have to stay there. Then the character and the player are both thinking, oh my god, this sucks, I don't even want to be here. Then the player is mad because they feel like they're being punished for a decision that the game developers made. And while you could argue that it's good that the player is now emotionally invested somehow in this stupid thing that's happened, it's not good if that emotion causes them to get up off their lazy butt and return the game to the store that they bought it from. That kind of thing makes the game less immersive. The player doesn't feel upset because of something that's happened in the game. They're upset because of something the game did to them, the player. The only way to overcome an obstacle, such as I don't want to be here playing this game in this particular way, is to turn the game off. It's a real problem when the obstacles get so metaphysical that it seems like you could blame the game developers for sending you to stupid places. Now, if you look at this hack and think about what they've actually done to try to make the hack work, you realize that they've got the same problem that Final Fantasy XIII does. The game is already developed, and the characters are going to go to certain places and have certain feelings whether the hacker likes it or not. All he can really do is try to fit the characters to the pre-existing story, and it doesn't always pan out. Trixie is screwing us up all the time, and I keep harping on her, but we also get other weirdness, like how Fluttershy is going to have to have some kind of relationship to Sweetie Belle. In the show, those two characters have basically no interaction, so we know it's going to turn out weird. But the hackers still got to do something with it. So while I'm critical of the stuff that's being done, it's not completely the fault of the hacker. It's a tough challenge, and it may be one of the leading reasons for so much confusion in the latest Final Fantasy games. But speaking of games, let's get back to ours. And now, away we go to explore Goose Shaped Island. I'm sure that Fluttershy is somewhere else on Goose Shaped Island, looking into things in her own way. Which is to say, taking care of animals, maybe? I don't know. Hiding someplace? I really don't know what Fluttershy does as a nomadic loner. Like, I understand when she stays at home in her cottage and takes care of animals, that's, you know, in character, but wandering around the continents, not really settling in any one place, that's kind of adventurous, and also kind of scary if you think about it. She never knows where her next meal is gonna come from, she doesn't really have a home. Oh, got a heel rod. Well, guess what character can only equip stupid items like heel rods? Yep, it's Rarity. Although it seems like Trixie is also equipping rod weapons, which is weird, because traditionally Celis was able to equip all the good weapons. And oh hey, a rope bridge! I am glad that somebody came through here and said to themselves, Oh man, I need to get a rope bridge from this side of that ravine to the other. Because here we are on the other side of that cave now. Hey! Hey, Sweetie Belle, I see you! That's right, you go back the way I came. Frickin' Sweetie Belle, we told her to stay at home and watch the house to make sure that nobody would- Hey, 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 I see you! You're gonna get the house burglarized, Sweetie Belle. Think you're gonna join our party? You're not joining the party! I swear, if you get in this party somehow- Okay, now this is just silly. And she's gone. Okay, now this is just some Looney Tunes stuff right here. Oh my, these are solid jade! Hmm, they look ancient. Twilight, how do you know that just from looking? I can see some writing carved on the back of this one. 
There's two different kinds of jade. There's jadeite and there's nephrite, and both are, like, silicate-based, but they're made of different chemical compositions, so you'd have to be some kind of jade expert- Sweetie Belle, I see you! She is right there! How come the other ponies don't see Sweetie Belle? Like, she's just right there on the bridge! How can it be that Rarity's boring-ass history lesson is somehow more captivating than Sweetie Belle being somewhere she's not supposed to be? Not just somewhere she's not supposed to be, but somewhere with giant high-level monsters that are only immune to magic that Sweetie Belle cannot cast. We're sitting up here with our exposition, da 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 the statues, the goddesses, these things are a warning. And then a giant monster leaps out from behind that door and drags Sweetie Belle off by its claws. As she is disemboweled before we can intervene, our last thoughts will be, oh my gosh, I wish we had paid attention to Sweetie Belle when we had the chance, as opposed to listening to Rarity ramble about these stupid jade statues. Rarity was just looking in her direction, Sweetie Belle is just right there, she should be in the periphery of the vision at the very least. Game, let me go! I have to rescue a child! Please! <laughs> there are Cazadors coming! It's gonna be Rex and Veronica all over again! No wait, I've got it. Maybe if we continue with this blunt exposition for long enough, then Sweetie Belle will get bored and she will go home. Yes, over there, that's probably where the espers go. But wait! Let's go read more history! The birth of magic. Three goddesses were banished here. In time, their quarreling, they began. Those unlucky ponies who got in the way were transformed into espers and used in war. The espers created these statues as a symbol of their vow. The espers have sworn to keep the goddesses pa The goddesses finally realized that they were being laughed at by those who had banished them here. In a rare moment of mutual clarity, they agreed to seal themselves away. With the last ounce of energy, they gave the espers their own free will. Into stone. Their only request was that the espers keep them sealed away for all eternity. Hello, Ultros. So do you like history, Ultros? Because the espers put these statues here to remind us of this very important history, even though no one ever goes to this cave. I think the whole thing might be a metaphor for the state of education today. Like, no one takes it seriously and it's just buried in a cave that no one ever wants to go to. And then all the monsters in the cave represent, like, testing and bureaucracy. Okay, seriously though, here's something that really baffles me about this scene. Ultro says he wants to sell the statues to Daring Do, who presumably would then sell them to a museum. And at that museum, they would no doubt put them on display and also examine their true meaning. Yet, because it's Ultros who profits from this experience, we are completely and violently opposed to the idea. Why? This history is lost, and it's not like we're stealing from anyone. The Espers probably don't even know that these statues are down here. Ultros' plan is probably a huge benefit to society, and yet we're still gonna kill him over it! Okay, regardless of all that, the true meaning of this battle is actually just to introduce Sweetie Belle and her skills. And here she comes. Falls right out of the sky, like a fat little angel that ate too many cakes. Sister, I'm here! Sweetie! I told you to stay at home! I couldn't miss the chance to practice my drawing! Plus, this is also my only scene! How dare you! I am Ultros! Also Octopus Royalty, if I recall. Sweetie and Ultros! What are you doing? Well, it looks like she's got her face in his tentacles. Why don't you pose for me? You know, like one of my French girls. I'm not one of your kitty friends! Don't talk to me as if I were! I don't want a portrait! Forget it! I don't want to draw it anymore! Nude portraits of octopuses are gross anyway! I'll just jump down from here! No! You can't do that! Sweetie Belle, this is your one scene! Your only scene! You have to stand up for yourself! Whisper, whisper! How dare you bother that little girl, the Philly. Philly, I won't forgive you if you hurt her. Well, what do you want I should do? Ask her to draw your portrait. She may actually make you look pleasant. Don't be so heartless. Dots. Lots of dots. So many dots. Oh, all right, Uncle Ulti really wants you to do his portrait. Hee hee hee, you're gonna love it. At any rate, come here. And then it turns out this entire battle was a complete charade. Charade. After I do the draw skill, Ultros will simply run away. Here we are. And it doesn't move, regardless of how powerful the move is. How can this be? I'm nothing more than a stupid octopus. And self-esteem issues drive Ultros away. ba 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 We saved the world from learning history. Hooray! Wow, that was so much fun. Wouldn't I be more helpful than Rarity? Helpful? As if that were a shock, I don't see what's... I suppose it wouldn't hurt to have you along. Alright already, if you insist, that's better. Yes, we'll just endanger your life. Now, remember, 
Esper's already leveled Vector, which was the capital of a place where they were teaching all the ponies how to learn magic. It was guarded by hundreds, maybe thousands of magically trained soldiers, all with more experience than you. So if something goes wrong, it's hard to say exactly how we'll die, but we will almost certainly die. Maybe they'll boil our hearts from the inside out, maybe they'll cast some kind of horrible flesh-eating virus spell. I just don't know, we have no experience dealing with espers and it's gonna be such a delicate situation. It could be the kind of thing that would be maybe a little bit escalated by having an impetuous, disobedient child tagging along. You know, of the type that couldn't even follow a simple direction like stay at home, sweetie belle. But yeah, yeah, no, I, it's cool to have you with us, sweetie belle. I'm glad you got to tag along. I can see absolutely no reason to further press the insistence that you go home where it's safe. Because really, it's all about you, you know. It's, it's about whether or not you can draw some picture that would come to life for a half second and do some half-assed attack that reflects your power and not the power of the city-destroying monsters that we're about to negotiate with. Oh, on top of that, I think we neglected to mention to you and Rarity that actually every time we've tried to negotiate with the Esper so far, people have died. The first time, Twilight turned into a monster and burned down a house. At least one. The second time, we destroyed the Magi Tech facility. The third time, we destroyed most of Vector. So going by past history, there's a really high likelihood that we might destroy something. Really, if I'm being terribly honest, I gotta say, Sweetie Belle, you'd probably be safer if, instead of being around when Twilight tries to negotiate, you smeared yourself in chocolate and ran butt first towards the Espers while screaming. I'm not saying you'd necessarily survive if you did that, but at least there'd be a longer period where the Espers were confused and not killing you. Heck, if you're really lucky, maybe they'll catch you and put you in a jar while they try to figure out what the heck is going on. With Twilight's negotiations, usually we have about five seconds before the next apocalyptic disaster. Are these espers? Yeah, sweetie Belle, go touch it on its butt. I bet it's gonna like that. Oh no, apparently that was rude. Maybe you should have said, Hello, my name is Sweetie Belle, as opposed to, Hi, Esper, I'm just gonna touch your reproductive organs. And oh good, here they all come. Everyone saw you do that. Thanks, Sweetie Belle, it sure is good that we brought you along instead of making you stay home. Oh my god, we're gonna have to write a report on this to the Empire. We're gonna have to tell them that we brought along a teenage girl, and she introduced us by touching an esper in a private area. Okay, yes, now we tell them to take Sweetie Belle home. Yes, that's good. She was a great deal of help. It's nice that she'll go on the airship forever after this. Why are you coming back? What are you doing? What? What did you do? Go home! Yeah, for goodness sake. So does anyone actually remember what we were going to offer the Espers? Did we have a plan for that? I mean, they don't want our money, and the only thing the Empire exports is killing. Halt! Were we just going to tell them that we're sorry? Was it like, mission tell Espers that we're sorry? Because now that we're here, and we're in front of all these Espers, and I realize we never had a plan, this is starting to seem really stupid. Okay, here we go. Count down to Twilight turning into another monster in 5, 4, 3, 2... One. Oh, actually, she's doing pretty good. Keep it together, Twilight! Um... Well, we're not murdering anyone yet, so so far we've had scads more success than we've ever had before. Oh, fade to black, ominous. And no one is dead or insane, I hope. You're different somehow. I sense a familiar power radiating from you. First time. First time we didn't kill everyone during negotiations. You're the espers that fled through the sealed gate. As a rule, we're not allowed to visit your world. We few had gathered near the gate and were wondering how we could save the espers that had been kidnapped. It was just a coincidence that Twy happened by when she did. I felt your presence through the gate. We bolted the moment that Twy opened the gate, but once in your world, we lost control of our powers. We completely leveled the city and took some innocent lives. Oh, you didn't do that on purpose? That's what happened to me. I lost all control of my power. There simply must be a different aura that keeps your powers under control in your realm. You must be careful here. We are deeply sorry to have caused you ponies such suffering and pain. Seems it's all water under the bridge. The Empire's had enough. Why not come with us and make peace? They would forgive us so easily? Well, sure, apparently you forgot that all your friends were butchered by them, so yeah. Sakura's waiting for us in Theramera's era. Let's go, Twilight. Right. Yes! Yes! Did you see that? We talked to the espers and nothing exploded. Nobody died or burst into flames. General Zakora! Applebloom, you have returned, and the espers trust you have seemed to have earned. Zakora, iambic pentameter is lub dub lub dub. That's the pattern you're trying to create. It's like you're injecting words specifically just to sabotage the meter. Zakora is what I'm called, and what is your name, oh esper so tall? I am called Yura. <laughs> this must be a really embarrassing introduction. We have done something inexcusable to your people. This probably isn't the time or place to ask for your forgiveness, but... It is I who owes you an apology. A new war of chaos is something we did not want to see. We must put all of this behind us. 
including this horrible, horrible rhyming session. We did it, everypony. I sure could use some peace and quiet after all that. Let's return to the capital. Shut your face, Trixie. Trixie? Trixie does not want to argue. You liar, you want to argue all the time! You're always calling me a retard, but I am not one! Psst, Rarity, is that her girlfriend? Hush, sweetie, it's not polite to ask such things. Wait, wait. Okay, so, we've been wondering this whole time if the creator was implying that Apple Bloom and, and Trixie were lesbians together, and apparently the answer is yes. Oh, good. Discord, I have never been more happy to see you in my life. Please save us from ourselves. Do something so we don't have to focus on us anymore. Whatever you do, just please don't let Sakura rhyme anymore. Well, you summon robot guys. Well, okay, it's the same thing you always do, but... Hee <laughs> hee, here comes chaos! Yes, very chaotic. Doing the same thing as always, in the predictable fashion that we have come to expect from you. Okay, battle stations, everyone. I think we're under attack. No? Okay, just stand still. Oh, there goes the whole party. Shoot, that was pretty one-sided. Discord, what is your purpose? In matters of peace, you have proved quite worthless. That almost kind of rhymed. Gahaha, Emperor's orders. I suppose I should thank you for turning them out of hiding. Now I can turn them into delicious magicite. I think he said luring, turning, whatever. The text is funky. Okay, so everyone just hold still, because like, like the party, you're under attack, so... Yes, uh, that Esper's little cogs are turning in her brain. Oh, too slow. Way too slow. Well, who knows, you know, it might have turned out better if she hadn't gotten moving sooner, but, you know, it didn't, so. Simpletons! Time for a little natural selection. Burn everything, see what crawls from the ashes. Okay. Are you guys actually burning anything? I don't think there's anything down there, or to the left. Discord, desist! Do not persist! I think that's like... Enough with your insipid rhyming! Yes! Thank you, Discord! Yes! Yes! Thank you! So... Negotiations went really well until everyone died again. If we get like a fifth try, maybe we could even come out with some kind of agreement with someone. But anyway, let's look at the monsters. There were a bunch of green caterpillars and space llamas. And also some more plant things and like weird birds. So I feel like today is a pretty good day. Trixie may have died, Sakura stopped rhyming, we almost had a successful negotiation where everyone didn't die. I mean, they did die at the end, but whatever. Small steps, you know, I I'm sure that the next time we'll do really good. So, thanks for playing with me, everybody.